Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. Merry Christmas Eve, I should say, and we'll say Merry Christmas as you leave the, our time together. Go, so glad you're here to worship with us. Thank you for those joining us online. Uh, we have something different today. We usually have our fill-outs out in the Welcome Center, but today we have the pads in the pews. So if you would pass those along, sign in. We would love to get some information. If, you've, if you could sign that, that would be great. Those online as well, if you just let us know that you're there, we'd love to just know who, who's worshiping with us this morning. Uh, another announcement, just a few announcements. The other one is next Sunday we have our service again is 11 o'clock. It's New Year's Eve. And then on that night at 9 o'clock, we are having a fellowship dessert and then praying in the new year. So from 9 to 12 will be a time of fellowship, playing games, eating dessert. Like we haven't had enough dessert probably already, um, but it's always good to eat and then we have to go on our resolutions. But other than that, um, please join us and then we'll have a time of uh, worship and praying into the new year. So I look forward to, to that time together. Just a note in the bulletins, when there's an asterisk by the carol, please uh, rise and stand if you're able. If there's no asterisk, that's when we can stay seated and just sing the, the carol while you're seated. Uh, with that in mind, Angela, come on down or come on up. Good morning. And as Pastor Jeff stated, welcome to our Christmas Eve morning service. I love seeing a packed sanctuary with so many familiar faces and then also faces that are currently new to me, but I hope will become familiar in the days and weeks to come. Before we join in the call to worship, Pastor Jeff has allowed me to share a brief testimony or God sighting. And if you guys have heard this one from me before, please forgive my repetitiveness, but I think it's kind of a good one. So years ago, I had a temporary job decorating Christmas trees at a garden center. This place had amazing ornaments. At the end of my time working there, I basically traded in my paychecks for ornaments. But hey, at least I got the employee discount. Yeah, and each year I'm excited to open the boxes containing my hard-earned treasures. It's like a mini Christmas morning, all for me, as I unwrap each marvelous item. Over time, some of my ornaments have become cracked or damaged, but I don't mind. They're precious to me. I love them. Last Christmas, I reached my hand into the storage bin and grabbed an ornament wrapped in old, discolored newspaper. And before I even pulled back the tattered newsprint, I recognized the ornament in my hand. Because I know it, and it's priceless to me. I know it's every curve and every flaw, and I'm glad it's mine. And right there, in that moment, I was struck by the Father's love for us. He bought me at an unimaginable price. He chose me. He is delighted when he sees me, flaws and all. He reaches out his hand, and in his infinite grace, he picks us up. He pulls back the superfluous layers to reveal his beloved. The ones he treasures, we are his prized possessions. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Come, faithful watchers, and behold, your salvation is here. We greet the wondrous light of our Messiah, Christ the Lord. We have waited and watched longing for God to show up and save us from the suffering and pain in our world. We greet the wondrous light, the fulfillment of our shocking hope. We have waited and watched, longing for peace to reign among us, a peace that removes unjust barriers, frees us from sin, and binds us together as neighbors, family, and friends. We greet the wondrous light, the bringer of our just peace. We have waited and watched, longing for joy that is persistent in the face of grief, lament, chaos, and oppression that weigh on us day in and day out. We greet the wondrous light, the source of our fierce joy. We have waited and watched, longing to encounter the love that transforms us, the love that is now here among us, first as a babe in a manger, then as a teacher, a friend, and our Savior. 
we greet the wondrous light, love incarnate, who has come to save us and transform us. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in singing Joy to the World. Gracious God, it's a great privilege that we can come here this morning and to worship you, to fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus, who we sing to you, joy to the world. Our Savior has come, our King has come, our Redeemer has come, our Friend has come, our Shepherd has come. And so we sing rejoice this morning as we, as we worship you today. And so if I, I pray, Lord, for all that we do today, all that we sing, all that we, we meditate on your word as we as we dwell on these prayers, Lord, that you would encourage and, and, and motivate us in and, and our walks with you, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, that as we leave this place, that we would be renewed, that we would be changed because we met with you this morning, oh, Lord Jesus. May we be people that express that joy then into a world that needs to hear it. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. The peace that the eternal King Jesus will bring is foretold. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the, water, as the waters cover the sea.
All right, this will be a reading from God's Word from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. I'd like to welcome all children to join me up front for a children's message. Uh, any adults, if you're not sure that the kids can come on their own, feel free to sit with them and escort them up and you can sit with me right out here on the stairs. Welcome everybody. You can sit right here, love. Yeah, you can sit by the poinsettias, beautiful. I should move my feet, give more space. 
There you go. We can scoot over. Oh yeah, make some room, make some room. Jesse's coming. I got new friends looking good, guys. Okay, so can you hear me okay? Nathan, yeah, check, thumbs up, excellent. Here comes Lila, here comes Micah. Awesome, love it. Here's Leora, beautiful faces. Good to see everybody. Okay, so Miss Whitney was just standing up there reading from the chapter in Luke in the Bible. And I'm going to take a few parts of that story and focus on today. But I need your help to retell the story and to also answer some questions and then pray with me at the end. Okay, so here we go. So this is the part in the shepherd story. So listen up. This is Luke chapter 2, just the first, the verses 8 through 10. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Okay, so here's the first part we want to focus on. Who did the angels talk to that night? The shepherds. The shepherds. Now, they were the very first people to hear this news. Jesus was born and God chose shepherds to give the message to. So we want to think about that, that the message of God, the birth of our Savior is for everyone. It wasn't for the most important people, the kings, the really important judges. It was for everyone starting with the shepherds. So now we need to know there's a word in there that I really, really think is cool. It says, fear not for behold. Now, if you go back in time and you could speak Greek, which I can't, but I looked this up. In Greek, the translation of just that word behold means so much more. It actually means, don't miss this, this is an observable fact. And those sentences were said with an exclamation point at the end. <gasps> Don't miss this. This is an observable fact. I mean, that means a lot more than just saying, look. Okay, so when we sing the word behold today, kids in the kids choir, or you hear the word behold in any of our praises, it means way more than just look. It means don't miss it. You, you've got to see this thing, okay? All right, now, this is the part that I think you guys were going to focus on here a little bit. When we hear the words good news, that actually means the gospel, okay? And the gospel, we're going to figure out what the shepherds do next with this good news. Do you guys have any ideas? What do you think, Nahila? They could spread it out. Nahila's answer was they're going to spread it out. So we're going to see if she is right. So we're going to go back into Luke and see. So the angels are now still talking to the shepherds. It says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And then we're going to skip to verse 16. See what this is now, what the shepherds are going to do. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. And we're going to go to verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Okay, so Christmas is pretty exciting. It's probably the most significant event of the year. And in fact... The birth of Jesus is, in history, the most significant event. So we get a chance to celebrate it every year and focus on the birth of Jesus, but we also need to remember what the shepherds did when they heard about it. So they went, they returned praising and glorifying. Okay, so that's what... The Bible reminds us that we're all to share that good news, the birth of Jesus. So I'm going to pray for us. And then my friends who are singing in the choir, 
You're gonna stay up here and get organized. Any of my friends who aren't, you're okay, she's right there. Your finger hurts, I'm sorry to hear that. I bet your mommy has something to take care of that. Okay, we're gonna pray. All right, here we go. Remember, dear children, that we have a great responsibility to share the good news of Jesus' birth with others. Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us. Let us rejoice in the hope, love, joy, and peace that Jesus provides today and always. Amen. Okay, you guys can go safely back to your seats unless you're staying to sing. Here, baby, this way. Okay, Jack, you're up here. Go ahead, Kareem, stand up. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 15, we want to be a generous community. In response to the grace we've received, we seek to give cheerfully, diligently, proportionately, and sacrificially. Ushers, if you'll please come forward to collect this morning's tithes and offerings. Thank you.
have to say, you guys, being a liturgist is the best seat in the house. Okay, just saying. Get to be part of all sorts of fun things. Volunteer, you guys. Uh, please remain standing and join me in the prayer for our offering today, which can be found in the bulletin. Giving God, as we recount the story of your gift of a Savior on that night long ago, we remember there were some who said, there's no room, and others who responded, come, we'll make room. As we bring our gifts to your altar, which group will be the best fit for each of us? Help us give with a heart of abundance and not one of scarcity. On this holiest of nights, let us dwell with those whose chorus is, come, we'll make room, remembering your abundant love for us. In the name of our Savior and Redeemer, we pray, amen. You may be seated. Oh, excuse me, remain standing and continue praising. Christmas Carol by G.K. Chesterton. A, the child lay on Mary's lap. His hair was like a light. Oh, weary, weary were the world, but here is all aright. The Christ child lay on Mary's breast. His hair was like a star. Oh, stern and cunning are the kings, but here the true hearts are. The Christ child lay on Mary's heart. His hair was like a fire. A oh, weary, weary is the world, but hear the world's desire. The Christ child stood on Mary's knee. His hair was like a crown. 
And all the flowers looked up at him, and all the stars looked down. I want to thank all that have participated thus far in our time of worship. I would just praise God for them by lift the hands. Thank you for all your work in um, bringing us to this point. I promise my message will be short, believe it or not. <laughs> the last scripture reading that we're going to focus on this morning is on Isaiah 9, 1 to 7. Follow along as I read. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Nepataya. But in the later time, he made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle of tumult and every garment rolled in blood or be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, 
to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it, to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. <clears throat> As we have been going through this Advent season, we have focused on the messages of Christmas. The first week of Advent, we talked about the hope that Jesus brings us, that the promised Messiah has fulfilled all the promises as it, as it dealt with him coming. And so those of the Old Testament who waited in expectations for the Messiah to come has come. And now we, since then, have this great hope that Jesus will come again to bring us into our new home. We talked about that Jesus is the love, that he brings love, that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It was great delight that Jesus came to give his life for you out of his love for you so that you could have eternal life with him. Last week we talked about the joy that he gives us, this substantial, real, eternal joy that we have in Christ. It's not dependent on our circumstances or our situations or how good our relationships are, because of, but based solely on Jesus himself, who for the joy went to the cross for you and for me. And so today we want to focus briefly on peace and that title that we see that Jesus in this passage is the Prince of Peace. Now, if I would ask you today what, what, would, what kind of peace you would want, many of you would say, I want global peace. We see a world that is broken, that is at war with one another. And we want global peace. We want political peace. We see political parties divided even within their parties, fighting among one another. And we want political, global peace. Or maybe you want inner peace. You want that peace that, that you feel like, oh, everything is good and right. Or maybe it is this relational peace that you're at odds with a brother or sister or parent or a friend or a coworker or, or neighbor, and there's this, this, this relational peace that you're looking for, that you're hoping for. But what kind of peace did Jesus come to bring? Well, it's important to understand that we, under, we need to understand the, the title of that, 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 that Isaiah is talking about, the Prince of Peace. The word prince often, who do we think of when we think of prince? We think of Prince Charles or their sons, Prince William or Prince Henry. Or maybe we think of Prince Charming of Cinderella. Or maybe you think of Prince, the, the artist, the musical artist. Who knows? But of the, the prince that that here is talking about does not come from some grand palace born with wealth or money. No, this peace is one who has come as a babe, born to save us and to restore us. So this peace is a, this peace that, 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 that Isaiah is talking, or the, the prince that Isaiah is talking about is the prince of a warrior, of a person who's going into battle. And so we then have this combined Prince of Peace. And what peace means here is to fill in or repair the cracks. It's in the verb form. It's the idea of shalom. And it expresses the idea of repairing or restoring wholeness and harmony to something. It assumes that something is broken, something is fractured, that something is not right, that needs shalom, that needs this peace that only Jesus can bring. See, the title implies that the work of Jesus Christ as a commander will go to war to restore what is broken. Now, many of us think that he's coming and he will come one day to restore global political peace. But this first coming is not about that. One day we look forward to where nations will be not against nations, but that, that we'll be living together, all nations together under the Lordship of Christ. But that is not what the first advent brought. This inner peace, yes, Jesus brings us peace as we deal with trials and struggles in our life, as we, as we deal with the brokenness of this world. Yes, there's a sense that Jesus provides us this calmness, that he is with us, that he's for us, that he loves us, that we can depend upon his promise, and that gives us inner peace. 
Or maybe it's relational peace that we think that he comes to bring. And he does bring relational peace, that sisters that are odd to one another can have reconciliation with one another. But we know here on earth that that still goes on. There's family strife, there's neighborhood strife, there, you know, fill in the blank type of strife among relationships. But yes, Jesus has come to restore those one day completely. But this advent, this first advent, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, came not, not, not only to bring world peace, not only to bring inner peace, not only to bring relational peace, but to bring peace with God. We need to understand that all of us, because of our sin and because God is holy, fall short of his, for, fall short of his glory and that we are at odds with God. We are his enemies. We are his foes. And we even sing often in this, the great song, Hawk the Herald Angel Sings. What does it say? Peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. See, Jesus has come in his first advent, born as a baby, as the shepherds came to realize, to born, born to save them from their sins. He's come to reconcile us, to mend the broken, to, to fill in the cracks, right? To fix us in the sense of saving us and bringing us into a right relationship with God. Paul says this in Ephesians. He, for he himself, is our peace, talking about Jesus, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing the hostility, the wall of hostility. And then he says this, in one body to reconcile both of them, both Jew and Gentile, to God. How? Through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we have access to the Father by one spirit. What makes us right with God? What, what provides a solution to God's holiness and our own sinfulness? It's Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has come to do and continues to do as our great high priest. He has come to, to alleviate the severe gap and to bring us into a right relationship with him. The question for you, are you looking for that kind of peace? Do you realize you may be at war with God and you need to turn to Jesus and as you turn to Jesus, see that he has taken and he has solved that battle that you have with God and that he can make you right with him that you can have true peace, that you no longer have to be at war with him, but you can be at peace. And that brings lasting joy. That brings meaning to us as we celebrate this Christmas season. There's a great uh, passage in Revelations 21 that I want to end with. And we see just the internal peace that God, Jesus gladly brings. It's in Revelations 21 to 7, and I leave you with this. Listen to the, the great peace that one day we'll all experience when Jesus comes at his second advent. Then he saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first hev earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down of, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard the loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. And he will dwell with them, and they will be with his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And I love this. Jesus will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither will there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who is, who is seated, on, seated on the throne of God, behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this inheritance, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the true peace that has come to alleviate the severe gap between God's holiness and our own sinfulness. And that is in the person and work of Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace who went to war for us, 
his war against Satan, the war against his cohorts, the war against um, our rebellion. And you have satisfied God's wrath and his judgment when you died on the cross for our sins. Yes, the incarnation is part of the salvation story. We need the, 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 your death on the cross to accomplish that great work that you've come to do, to break those barriers so that we no longer are hostile to you, but we are your very friends, your very allies, people that you delight to save and to work in and through. So Lord, may this Christmas season, may we see that we have the greatest gift that we ever needed, and that is salvation, that is peace, that is love, that is joy, that is hope, that only can be found in Jesus Christ. And we all say, amen. Let us pray this prayer together, this prayer of peace found in your bulletin or overhead. Jesus, you are the giver of true and lasting peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, yet very real and transforming. We were once your enemies, but through your salvation, we are now your allies and friends. The peace you provide makes us right with God 24-7. With your peace, we can live confidently before you and others as we face the many challenges and uncertainties of life. Even our own brokenness, as we th thank you for this lasting peace that cannot be broken. A peace that sustains us and a peace that provides calm amidst the storms of life. Help us to share your peace with a divided and anxious world. We pray this through our eternal King Jesus, amen. And as a a way of response, let us stand and sing Silent Night. Five, six.
My friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, we're so glad you have come to worship with us this morning. Hear these words again from Isaiah about Jesus. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall, not, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Go in the peace that Jesus brings. Amen. Thank you. 